Hi, this is Pastor Ken from Vineyard of Hope in Osawatomie, Kansas. My prayer for you today is that God would touch your heart in a real and tangible way for a breakthrough in your life as you hear this message. Thank you for watching, and I want to give you a personal invitation to come and see what we're all about. The church information is at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoy this message. God bless. Have you ever just wished you could break out of your shell and run around and scream and yell and, and just be happy? And it seems like nothing's making you that way or getting you to that point. I think sometimes we've lost the fact, lost touch of the fact that we can be childlike. Not childish, but childlike. It doesn't look normal for a kid to run around and scream in church because everybody said don't do it. But when the Holy Spirit gets all over a little kid and they start running, you better not try and stop them. You guys don't understand that yet because Pentecost is something we're going to experience that has not yet come. Not to this church. So I want to encourage you today. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to do three verses. I'm going to encourage you in the word because I think that you need to understand you can break out again. If you've been holding something back, it's time to stop holding back. I mean, that was such a timely act of worship and obedience to the Holy Spirit. Just the word that you gave and dancing before the Lord. Come on, guys. Some of you want to do that, but you just can't. You're, you're stuck in a shell in a bubble of what people care about and think. You're worried about what people will say. You've, you've done grown up too much, right? So here's the project. When we go there, when we go there and we read this afterwards, I'm going to have you stand up. Matthew chapter, or Mark, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 10 says this. One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. Isn't that what we just did? But the disciples scolded the parents for being, <laughs> for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with the disciples. Jesus got mad. How many of you guys know that? He got mad quite a few times. He just didn't act out in it. Not in sin. So he gets mad because the disciples are going, hey, don't bother Jesus. Take your kids and get them away. Well, that make me mad too because I love kids. Don't tell them not to come see me. Just let them come. I'll scare them anyway. They'll go away. Anyway, he said this. He was angry with the disciples. So he said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. He didn't isolate the children. He said, those who are like these children. I'm going to get your attention. I tell you the truth. Anyone that, who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. And then he took the children into his arms and he placed his hands on their heads and he blessed them. It's kind of funny that this is all coinciding because we didn't plan it like that. It's just a, it's a neat thing that... Uh, that we would be sitting there, me and my wife, and I would be watching her in the pool with the grandkids, and all of a sudden we would do something that would change the course of how I was thinking this week. The Holy Spirit's cool. I want you to all stand up with me real quick. Now, I want you to act like you're, you're a kid now, okay? Not childish, but childlike. All right, shake it off. Who's up? You're in church. You're not supposed to be all prim and proper forever, right? Okay, I'm going to read this one more time, and you guys are going to join me. Sorry. You're going to join me in this. Don't stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like those children, these children. I tell you the truth, anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children into his arms and he placed his hands on their head and he blessed them. So I want to talk to you about being a childlike person today, childlike faith today, but I want you to get biblical truth in this, okay? However, you got to get out of yourself for a minute before you can do it. You're not going to be able to see what I'm saying until you act it out. This is a time for you to break free. Are you ready? All right. So what I'm asking from you before we start is do something with us, okay? Come on, kids. Come up here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You guys going to... I watched you do it in the pool. Devin, you can join them. Yeah, this is my grandsons. So Grandma and him, they were, they were in the pool doing something, and the Holy Spirit said, look, with us, what, look what's happened to Missy while she joins them. And I thought, what are you talking about? He go, she goes, oh, to be a kid again. Go over there. Ready? They're going to lead this and we're all going to join them. Go. Let's see who has, who has the ability to do it. I dare you. Is that what we do? <laughs> I can't dance. Come on, guys. I don't 
see no hopping going on. Come on, Larry, make it bounce. <laughs> Freeze. Skipping, skip. Come on, skip. Go like that. Let's do what Devin's doing. Now I say, freeze. Now look around. I don't see many hopping going on. Ready? <gasps> oh, lead you guys go. Come on, you're not too big to do it, Justin. Let's go, buddy. Oh, trying to break them out of this, you know? Freeze. Come on, Miss Tiff. <laughs> Ooh, I can't dance no more. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh. Is that it? That's it. Ha! Give yourself a hand. Where you going, girl? How do you feel now? A little bit better, huh? That or you can't breathe because you're out of shape like me. <laughs> Some Christians say that, child, that, that, that they don't need any reasons for, or explanations for their faith. A childlike faith is, doesn't question what's going on and it's, it's just a blind faith. That's childish. That's a lie. Children are the most amazing creatures in the world because they won't shut up sometimes. <laughs> They'll say, why, why, why? Why, Dad, why? You tell them why, there's another why to the why. Why, Dad? Why did it happen like that? Why do you have to do that? Why do you say that? Why, Dad? How about moms? <laughs> if mom, hey, mom, what are you doing? Mom, what are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? I don't know. What are you doing? They talk, they speak, they question everything. Yeah. We have this misconception that, that having childlike faith is a blind faith where you don't question anything, you don't do anything, you just, I believe, I believe in the Bible. No, you believe somebody's interpretation of the Bible if you're not asking questions. Because we ask questions when we want to grow. When we want to know somebody, when we want to learn who they are and love them. How many of you remember when you were a kid? I remember being a child. Yeah, Jake, you remember that, Maka? Okay, way back when, huh? Yeah, a long time ago. Ah. I remember thinking that my dad was perfect. And that he said he was going to do it. He's going to do it. I trusted him. I believed without a shadow of a doubt that my dad, when he invested in me or he said he was going to do something, like I was going to get a spanking when he got home, oh, I knew it was coming. I trusted him emphatically because childlike faith, it, it's trust. It's trust. It's not blind. It's not ignorance. It's trust. We think they're blind in their faith because our, their childlike faith is what they have because they're, they're ignorant. But God says, no, it's because they trust me. They question it, they find out the truth, they live in the truth, and they trust the truth, which is the Word of God. So I want to break this misconception, I want to break this thing that says, hey, have some blind faith and, and just go be childlike in your faith and dance. No. Dance because you believe the truth. Shake out of your, your, your shackles and your bondage of not being able to jump up and down and scream and, and praise God and yell hallelujah and say, I'm going to be like a kid again in my faith because I'm tired of a dead church living in a dead world that needs to be brought to life. That should be our heart, man. We want something bigger from God than what we have now. We want something greater in our life than what we have now. More freedom, more, more of his word, more of something, power that we can impart into somebody else. But more is better. How many of you know kids love more? Yeah. Yeah. Give them a chocolate bar. See what they do. Come on, guys. I've raised three kids and I got six grandkids. When they come over, they eat. Oh, my gosh. Can I have another one? Can I have another one? Papa, can I have some more? I quit doing that because then <laughs> they don't share and we have a problem. <laughs> My point is this. It's okay to cut loose and be childlike in your faith. We can't mature beyond enjoying being free, free to worship, free to be excited about God, free to do what he's called us to do because we sometimes think that we've grown up past all that. And I got some news for you. You will never be too old to praise God. You will never be too old to worship him. You'll never be too old to seek him and ask questions about everything he has for your life because that's what he wants from us. Childlike faith is one that says, I'm so in love with my daddy. 
that I'm going to believe every word and I'm going to run to him every time I need to. Every time I want to. Even if he doesn't want me to, I'm going to run jump in his arms. Because that's childlike faith. That's love. How many of you know he loves you? He loves you so much that he wishes you'd stop growing up so quick. Any of us do that? I watch the twins growing up. I'm like, what? They're talking. She had a conversation with me in my office. That big. It happens like that. And then next thing you know, you have teenagers whose lives may or may not have been great who now think they're too big to listen. Sound familiar? Too big to obey the small things because they're too hard to do. Doesn't that sound like us? We've outgrown the truth sometimes in our own mind and God is saying, let's come back to where we haven't outgrown a thing. Let's remember our first love. Let's try all over again. Let's get, let's get back to the place where we first started when, when Jesus was everything and we just had this fresh touch from him and we didn't want anything else. When we had an authentic move from Christ that moved us to, to action instead of just sitting back going, I'm too old for this. I've grown up. I'm past. I'm more, I'm more, offering plate. I'm more, I'm more mature than that. I'm not going to stand up and run and scream Jesus. I don't care what you say, Lord. I'm too old for that. If that's you, how's that working for you? How's your life? Is there anything different? Because being too grown up is simply putting you in a place where you're spiritually dead. So maybe you've grown up too much. <laughs> I don't know, but maybe it's time that we let some stuff down, like our hair if we have any. Let's dance if he says dance. Let's speak when he says speak. Let's let the gifts of the Holy Spirit come alive in this church. Let's have some childlike faith that says this. You know what? I may not be perfect. My pastor is definitely not perfect. People around me aren't perfect, but I'm still not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to act like a kid who nags and nags and nags and nags until I get what I'm asking from God. You say, what's that mean? Man, pursue him. Don't stop just because it's hard. Don't stop just because it's rough. Because it's getting rough. It's been rough. Some of us have faced some crazy things in the last couple of years. And here we are still going. Still fighting. Maybe a little differently these days. We got a limp. Maybe we got a, a wound and a scar to show for it. But guess what? Have we quit yet? No, let's be like that kid that does, he refuses to stop until he touches that fire and guess what he was asking for. Don't touch that fire, it's hot. That's what daddy used to say. Don't touch the fire, it's hot. Mom, don't touch the stove, it's hot. And what do we do? Right? Oh, they stop you again and you stop and you'd be like, Mm, they catch you again and tell you not to and you would back away and you would wait and then one day they said, okay, I'm going to let you do it. And you touch that fire and it was hot and it burned you and you scream and you let out a hoot, right? Man, I want you to catch a different kind of fire. I don't want you to touch everything, seek him, chase him, pursue him, ask him and then when he says put your hands in the fire, put it in there because that fire will be contagious. And you'll never forget the moment you were touched by God with a fire that changes everything. A kid will never forget the hard lesson learned when they touched that fire and mama said no. For now on, mama doesn't have to say no. They know better, right? That's what I want from me. I want you to say, God, I'm going to seek you out until you show me what I have. Until you show me my gift. And then, until then, I'm going to pursue you. But when he shows you, start acting like a kid with it. Throw it around. Dance with it. Use it. Put it in people's face and say, look what I got from, from the Lord for you. I gave my life. I didn't just say, hey, I'm gonna, I want my Savior. I want my Savior and my Lord. Lord means He's going to gift you and you're going to go out and He's going to tell you what to do and you get to use it and do something with it. It's like playing with a toy. We're not too old to be used by God in this house. This church has not been here so long that it is, is dead and dying. No, no, no. We're coming to life in Jesus' name. The reputation's been squashed. We've worked hard to clean that. My prayer is that instead of acting like baby Christians that are childish, that we would commit and be childlike <laughs> from here on out. My wife has something she's going to share about this that I thought was amazing. So I'm going to sit with the kids and let you share that. I think our hearts are moving toward, toward simply making a, a... It's a simple point, but it's a hard thing to do. Our point is, have enough faith to break loose. Sounds simple, don't it? We have a simple gospel. Give your life to Christ. He'll forgive your sins. You get to spend eternity with him. We think it's that black and white and until we start reading in, in between and it's, you know, you give your life to him. Lay down this and do 
don't do that and, and you get all of this, A plus B equals whatever the solution is. And, uh, and so we find that it's a simple gospel but it's hard to live. And we understand that life sometimes after a while tears us down. But God is building the character of Christ in us. And did you know the character of Christ, the characteristics of Christ-like faith? Or what the characteristics of childlike faith is? Same, I'll read them to you. They have faith. They believe that if daddy says, jump, I'll catch you, they're going to get caught. Faith like a kid is what God calls Christians to be, to have. They forgive easy. They don't hold grudges. They're full of love. They laugh. They aren't cynical or skeptical. They're worry-free and carefree. They aren't full of doubt. They're innocent. You know, it's, it's just amazing. God wants us to be innocent. That's Christ-likeness, which comes through Jesus Christ. They express what they feel. They're uncomplicated, unlimited energy. Who remembers those days? Oof. Unlimited. They just keep going. We should be powered by the Holy Spirit in such a way where we go, and we go, and we go, then we rest, and we go again. But we go as long as God gives us the power to do it because He has an unlimited resource for us to tap into. Childlike faith moves mountains. They're eager to learn new things. How many is actually eager to learn new things? Because there's a lot of unteachable spirits out there these days. But I wish we'd be like babies where we're teachable. Where we're kids where we just can't wait to learn a new thing. Daddy, show me how to do that. They marvel at creation. What if we fall back in love and then we go, Oh man, look at those butterflies. Oh man, check out the choo-choo train, Dad. Kids, they marvel in those things. Childlike faith is one that Christ-like faith mimics. Say, Jesus, look what you did today. You saved me. You sanctified me. You set me free. Oh, look, you fed me today. Thank you for this food blessed to my body. Not just because it's a religious thing to say, but because I mean it. Thank you. You know, kids said, thank you. You gave me $5. I can buy candy. But what if we were back to that place of grat gratitude? Imagine, imaginative. Kids can imagine the craziest things. Right? Their imagination is nuts. How about you? Christ-like faith. Christianity, it's built on, on, on faith in something you don't see, that you haven't touched, yet he touches you. So it's not tangible, but yet we believe it. That's crazy faith. Crazy faith in something that was imaginary. She's going to preach it. You going to come preach it? All right. Creative, playful, playful. Let's, be play, let's, let's dream big dreams like kids do. I'm going to be Superman. My grandson, I asked him, who are you? He goes, I'm Flash. That's one day. The next day, I'm Batman. Jackson. He's every sinking one of those guys. <laughs> Depends on what day. But, but the fact is he's, imagine, he's dreaming big dreams for himself. What if we as Christians begin to do that again? The last thing is they dance. They dance. That, that song is hilarious. They dance, they dance, they dance. They don't dance just because it's fun. They dance because there's joy in their heart. There's something that's moving them, pushing them towards being excited about life and enjoying it at every moment possible. That's what we want from you, church. We want you to not just get on board, but to get on board with joy and Christ-like faith and say, I'm going to believe in the God of the impossible once again. Listen, I'm having, a, I'm having a hard time believing in some things myself. But I haven't quit. Have you? Let's pursue God together. Would you stand with me? Let's say, God, make us people that love like you, that live like you, that run around like kiddos do, and enjoy life instead of just going through it with no purpose.